Morning, Joel. I haven't seen him yet. Ah. Is he here? Is he going to be on the ride or is it going to be a last second? Now what I'll do is I'll probably set the red fence at 10 seconds. That's the usual. It's not a problem on this ride, but it just helps keep people in check. Yeah, here we go. So we'll turn on the uh, 10 second 10. There we go. Well, keep up with them. Ah, Joe's made it. I said he'd be last second. There you go. So the idea of this is just to roll out nice and steady. I'll try and stay as close to one watt kilo as I can. The last two events um, were supposed to, in the second half, increase to 1.5. But the last two events, because we've had newcomers, we've stayed more or less at the same pace all the way through. This is my first ride in a week, so I'm feeling a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit rusty and a little bit sore. I think I've had, I won't say the flu, but I've definitely been uh, been down with a bug. So I've not, uh, I've not been cycling. And it's pretty hard when you come back from a week off. This is a great ride to do in that scenario because it's always very steady pace. Keep it nice and simple. Now what I'm doing here is I'm calling out and asking for the newcomers because we always we always give a well, there we go we got Marcus as well Oh, Joe's already a fair way behind. What's he up to? Well, I better ask.
I better close up the gap. I don't normally increase space, but I just want to uh, close up that small gap. It's unusual to get a gap because normally the group do stay on pace, but you can see from the wattage tonight that quite a few of the riders are going over pace at this early part of the ride. And somebody's obviously pushing the pace along. What I will do is I will close the gap, but I won't stay at this pace. I will ease off and hopefully the group seeing me on the back they'll it's settling down now nicely. What you have to remember is that this ride is aimed purely at newcomers or riders like myself wanting to uh, have a recovery ride. Or sometimes it's just, you know, some riders use it as a warm up for rides later on in the evening. But we never rip it up, it's never. It's never a ride that gets out of hand. And what I will do is at the half halfway point, excuse me, at the halfway point I will ask if riders are comfortable raising the pace to 1.5 what he knows which normally we're okay with, so we'll see what happens. That'll be in another five minutes time. It's so important to learn drafting in Swift because you have to put in a lot more effort if you lose somebody's wheel. If there's a group in front of you and you lose the wheel, you have to put in a lot more effort just to close the gaps. And the front is speeding up once again. Okay, we better tell the front to ease. The key as a leader is to try and not get not let the riders make you increase pace all the time. Try and stay on pace and get the riders to come back to you or to slow down to allow you to catch. The fence helps with that because obviously anybody going through the fence, uh, five at the moment as you can see from the flyers, the fence will sort of remind people to return to the group. It doesn't kick them out of the game yet. What it does is it gives them a message on screen telling them to return to the group. Good job by Joe sweeping. You can see another seven have gone through the fence. And what that does, they take other riders with them. So you get one going through, you'll get somebody following him, you'll get somebody following him. And before you know it, you can have half your group going through the fence. Now I'm not going to chase, I'm just going to keep it nice and steady. I'm 
My little group around me. Okay, so I've asked the group now to increase the pace to 1.5. That should help us catch some of the group in front. The danger when I do this though is that I lose people off the back and to be fair if Joe calls out to me and tells me that we are losing people I slow it back down because this is a group ride where you look after the people at the back I'm not so concerned about those at the front So I'm at 1.5 now that I've bridged the gap. And I'll stay at this till the end now. Unless Joel, well I'm just going to message. That would be to slow. But you can see from the uh, from the notification on screen that people that went past and through the fence have now returned. We're down to five again. And Joe's just sent a message saying the back's doing fine. So I know I'm good to stay at this pace. So I'll thank the group. It's really important to try and keep a good sense of the leaders in control on these kind of rides. It gives the riders confidence, new riders will come back again because they've enjoyed the ride. If they can rely on the pace, if they know what they've got to do, then that's got to be good for the group etiquette, the group dynamic, whatever. Because uh, we get the same riders coming back week after week. And I know why. It's because they enjoy the ride, because they know exactly what they're going to get. The little van thing that you can see the white line around the edges counting down on, that's a drafting boost. That's part of the game. Within the game you get different what are called power-ups and they last for various amounts of time. I think the drafting boost, signified by the van, lasts for about 15 seconds. You can imagine that drafting boosts are pretty important if you're wanting to uh, try and close a gap with a small group. But probably the most useful of the power-ups is the aero helmet because you would use that in a sprint if you extra speed. And you may see that happening in the true two which follows this ride. People put in the aero helmet, power up in motion as they take in part in the sprints. I've got three fans set up in the uh, room, all on an electric switch where I can choose to turn them on and off remotely. 
The smallest fan is in front of me just above the monitor that cools down my head and my frontal area and then I have a medium sized fan off to the right and that's blowing onto my right shoulder and across my frontal area and then the largest fan which I don't have switched on during this ride is on the left hand side again pointing more or less at my uh, at my top tube to cool my core area but with it being such a large fan it extends all the way up to my face so it's pretty good when I need it Once I really get back into riding hard, which I haven't done yet because I just haven't had the fitness, but once I do, then I will install a fan behind me to blow cool air on my back. Just had to put on a bit of a spurt there to make sure I stay with the group. So you can see the extra effort needed, 2 watt kilos, needed just to close the gap. Once you let a small gap form, you really have to work hard to close it. and the front group are speeding up again this is unusual, we don't usually get I wonder if there's somebody in the front group pulling them along because this is most unusual, we don't usually get them you know, I'm seeing quite high numbers from some of the fronts Sandstrom, 3 watt kilos, what the hell is he doing? Haynes What are they doing? They're disrupting the whole ride Okay, and that's it. Right over.